In this video, we're going to combine what we've learned so far about the E1 reaction with rearrangement reactions. So it's going to be these two reactions in one. So as an exercise here, I've drawn a problem. So you can try and draw out the product of this reaction if you're up for it. Take this alcohol, add H2SO4, and ask yourself what's going to be the product of this reaction. So again, if you're up for it, press pause, work on it by yourself. When you're ready, press play, and we'll go through it. Okay, so hopefully you've gone through it. Um, let's have a look at this problem here. And it always helps to number the carbons a little bit and just to make sure that we know, we can keep track of where the carbons are. And it's not really necessarily the IUPAC proper numbering, but just to sort of keep track of things numbering. And it can also help to keep track of hidden or implicit hydrogens as well. We don't have to draw them all in, but just to remember that they're there. It's really crucial, especially near where we're going to have the, our reaction happen. And it can't hurt as well to, well maybe we're gonna redraw our oxygen a little bit here, maybe see why in a second. Uh, but remember that oxygen is, even though we haven't drawn them in, we've got two lone pairs on our oxygen there. And we can always draw in the structure of H2SO4 as well. HO, S, double bond O, double bond O, OH. And the last thing to think about is we always draw, you can draw these lone pairs in, it's not crucial, but we can. And the last thing to think about is the dipoles. And what do we mean by dipoles? Well, remember electronegativity, the greediness for electrons, if you will, by atoms. So hydrogen is about 2.2, so it's on the fairly low end of the electronegativity scale. Oxygen is 3.4, that means oxygen is going to pull electrons towards it with whatever bonds, atoms it's bonded to. So that means that in this oxygen hydrogen bond, Hydrogen's gonna have a little bit less than normal electron density because the oxygen's gonna be pulling electrons away. The oxygen's gonna be delta minus. We can do the same thing over here. Okay, so all this is is just a really long way of saying that what's gonna happen first is the lone pair on the oxygen is going to attack the proton on our sulfuric acid. And we're going to break the OH bond here. So let's get rid of the question mark and draw the first thing which happens, which is step one. One is protonation. Okay, so that would give us this, CH3, O, and then we'll draw in plus charge and then pair. Okay, and we'll also have as a trailer, we'll have the counter ion of sulfuric acid here. Okay. Then what happens next? Well, this is an E1 reaction, right? So what's the critical first step in the E1 reaction? Well, we're going to have our leaving group leave. And remember, water is a better leaving group than OH minus. We've we've turned our acid into H. Our acid turned our OH into H2O. It's a better leaving group exclamation point uh, because it's a weaker base weaker base so that gives us this so we're going to have now that this pair of electrons has gone to the oxygen oxygen's now got two pairs of electrons on it whereas it used to just have one. So it's gone from positive to neutral. So the charge has been transferred to our carbon here. So now this is positively charged. Okay, now carbocation. Question, anytime you form a carbocation is, the question is to ask is, will it rearrange? Question mark. And uh, actually let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. This is a carbocation. Will it rearrange? Remember the order of carbocation stability. Tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary. And it might help to draw in the neighbors of our carbocation because that's going to determine whether rearrangement is going to occur or not. So if we draw in the neighbors, we have a CH3 and we have a CH. This is a primary carbon. Primary carbon rearrangement 
would lead to a primary carbocation. So this would be less stable. So there's going to be no rearrangement from this side. Okay, what about this other side here? Here we've got a CH, and this is a tertiary carbon. Tertiary carbon. So question is, what kind of carbocation would we get after rearrangement? We would get a tertiary carbocation, right? And this is going to be more stable. Rearrangement because we're going to move the hydrogen, or the hydride, we call it, because we're moving the pair of electrons along with it. So let's think about what would happen here. We take a pair of electrons from this carbon and we break the pair, the bond between carbon and hydrogen, we move it over here. Um, so uh, let's see. So what would this look like? Might help if you redraw everything and then, then you can always, always modify it later. So let's just redraw this. H, and then we've got hydrogen, positive charge, and pair of electrons goes here, and I can't forget to draw the CH3. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we're breaking the carbon-hydrogen bond, okay? And that pair of electrons is going to form a bond between the carbon and the hydrogen. And what's that going to do to the charge? Well, it's going to remove the charge here because now we no longer have a carbocation on this carbon. It's got eight electrons to it. So it's sharing a, a new pair of electrons with this hydrogen. So it has an extra electron where it didn't have one before. And this carbon, carbon three, as we numbered it, is going to go from sharing a pair of electrons with the orange hydrogen to lacking that pair. So it's going to actually have lost an electron to itself. So this is now a tertiary carbocation. And so this was step three, which is um, we call a hydride shift. Step two, let's just make some room here. Step two is, is um, loss of leaving group. Okay, so the last step we're going to do is the we now have a tertiary carbocation which is certainly more stable. So we're going to have to do an elimination reaction. And if we're going to do an elimination reaction it helps if we draw out all the neighboring hydrogens. This is going to help us figure out remember remember Zaitsev's rule Remember Zaitsev's rule? This is going to tell us which alkene we're going to form. So what you need to do is draw out all the hydrogens on, first of all, identify your carbocation, which is here. And then all the carbons next door are what we call beta carbons. They're all beta carbons. And we're going to remove a hydrogen from the beta carbon with the fewest number of hydrogens, because we want to form, Zaitsev's rule tells us that we want to form the more substituted alkene. So always form the more substituted alkene. So if we remove this carbon with two hydrogens here, we would end up with a, um, a, tr a tri-substituted alkene. Same here, we would actually end up with a tri-substituted alkene. If we removed a hydrogen from this hydrogen here, we would end up with a tetra substituted alkene. So this is going to give us our most stable alkene. So this is a tetra substituted alkene, which is going to be the most stable alkene we can form according to Zaitsev's rule. And this is actually going to be our final product. So that's an example of a uh, E1 reaction that occurs with rearrangement. We're going from a secondary carbocation to um, 
we, we, we protonate the OH, we form water, we lose water, we form a secondary carbocation, we have a hydride shift, and then we have a final deprotonation. And that gives us our final alkene.